Oh, as I just mentioned a few a few seconds ago, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, webinar on the ISTQB Foundation Acceptance Testing Course uh, Qualification. So just to introduce myself, I'm John Young. I'm one of the uh, trainers at TSG, and I I'm one of the people who delivers this course. So what I'd like to do is just run you through the agenda for today. This is going to be about a 15 to 20 minute presentation with then um, time for some, for some Q&A. So uh, if you can hold your uh, questions off until the appropriate time, it just means we can run through things uh, nice and smooth. I just bear me, I'm just gonna let some more people in. So the agenda for this session, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about why, why I think this course is important. Uh, I'll talk to you about who the course is aimed at. Um, then I'll talk you through the, the, the aims in terms of the business outcomes of the training, but also the learning objectives that have been set by the syllabus. And then I'll give you a talk through some of the, the key elements of the course content. Uh, and then I'll just explain the exam format and the prerequisites to taking the exam. And then we'll open up for, for questions. So if you all don't mind just leaving, leaving questions till the end, that's okay. Um, so why, is, why do I think this course is, is important? Well, over the years, a lot of us have been involved in acceptance testing. I certainly have from, in fact, that's how I started my testing career many years ago. Uh, acceptance testing is as important today as it's ever been. It's probably more important because of the nature of the projects we work in these days. Oh, yeah. Requ requirements are changing. Uh, the nature of projects are changing. But we've still got to make sure that we are getting products that are uh, fit for purpose, that actually meet the business needs, and getting clarity on what, what, what is acceptable and getting feedback and measurement of what is acceptable is, is, is just as crucial as it's ever been. But things have moved on from the early days of traditional projects. So we've got to be able to adjust our acceptance test approaches to whatever kind of projects we work on. And more and more these days, agile projects are becoming mainstream. And um, we've got to be able to adjust and adapt and make our acceptance test approaches fit for any kind of situation these days. And the nature of our requirements and the nature of the way requirements are specified is changing. And nowadays, as we're more moving more towards agile and DevOps approaches, then it's even more important that we start to, as testers, understand the kind of formally mod formal modeling approaches that are being used. Um, so we're more familiar. We, we understand the kind of documentation is being used. We understand how to interpret that documentation. And the whole idea of collaborative work, um, acceptance testing is one of those activities that works best when we get both the developers, the testers, but more importantly, the business, the product owners and the business analysts working closer together. So the need for collaboration is greater than ever. And this course is a, and the syllabus this course is based on is taking, Good practices, you could say best practices that are promoted. Now, certainly this is an ISTQB qualification, so we, we're picking up on the good practices of testing from ISTQB, but also the syllabus has taken on board some of the, the, the good practices now that are being promoted by the, the IQBBA, the International Qualification Board for Business Analysis. So what this course is doing is giving the attendees insights of both good practice testing, but also good practice business analysis. Um, so it's important because things, things never stand still. Things, things are changing. and We've got to be able to be ready for those changes. So this, this course is aimed at, and the syllabus is aimed at anyone. Uh, uh, excuse me, but could you all mute your mics? I've got a bit of interference coming on from some uh, mic input. So do you all just mind muting your mics, please? Great, thanks. Um, so the course is aimed at anybody who's involved in software acceptance testing. Uh, and we're looking at not just testers, so product owners, business analysts, test engineers, test managers, so everybody who's involved is probably going to find something useful coming out of this course. Um, the focus of what the course is trying to do 
is get the concepts, the methods, the practices that both product owners, business analysts, particularly business analysts and accessors need to, to, uh, to work on and to promote the idea of the more we understand our methods of work, the easier and better and more effective it's going to be in terms of collaboration. So anybody who's got an interest in acceptance test is going to get a value out of this course. Now, the syllabus has set and been aligned to some business outcomes. So the whole idea of the training is to give people uh, the capabilities to be able to um, contribute to projects. So from the business analyst and the product owner's point of view, um, the aim of the, the knowledge and the, um, the approach that we're covering in the course is going to help people to participate in any acceptance test early stages, the analysis and the design, and also in making sure that the, the product is aligned with the business requirements. Um, so participation in acceptance testing, but also in the organization of acceptance testing. So setting up the processes, understanding the artifacts we need, uh, getting the communication, the collaboration uh, with the testers and other stakeholders we're aiming to get those um, enhanced. Um, but also to be able to contribute to making sure we have a good quality process. So the, the more about the process, uh, the quality assurance side of making sure that the, the acceptance testing we're putting together is actually going to be appropriate so that we do get um, the right feedback, the right validation and verification of what's being produced in the projects. So from the business point of view, that's the, the, the outcomes. From the testers, it's to make sure that as well as what we're familiar from the testing side of view, we are better able to contribute to the, some of the earlier stages of requirements definition so that we can contribute to the definition of the acceptance criteria, uh, but also that we can get in both defining and clarifying those acceptance criteria that we can work more efficiently with the BAs, the business analysts, and get a, a better understanding and appreciation of what the, the business wants out of the product and why the, the business needs are, are important in organizing the testing. So they're the general aims of what the syllabus is trying to achieve. Now, to, 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 to achieve those business objectives, we need to transfer some skills and capabilities. So there are quite precise, specific learning objectives set in the syllabus, but to paraphrase those up to a high level, what, what we're aiming to do is to help people in Creed uh, be able to, so for example, um, develop and review the acceptance criteria for both requirements from traditional projects and for user stories. To be able to apply our acceptance test design techniques in the context of both um, ATD, acceptance test driven development and behavior driven development. And getting the ability and the appreciation of understanding the Gherkin syntax to be able to create test case um, acceptance tests using the Gherkin language and syntax for scenario-based uh, acceptance criteria, um, but also to be able to appreciate that not all acceptance testing is going to be formally organised, so that we can have uh, a better appreciation of how we can get our acceptance, sorry, not accept, our, our, our exploratory testing uh, organised around things like charters and time boxes and how that can fit into both acceptance test UAT, for example, but also some of the more fluid uh, acceptance testing activities like beta testing. But also that in getting the insight of what the business wants, uh, that we're able to review business process um, uh, models, business rule models. Um, and particularly here, we're looking at some of the more formal notation that's being um, promoted these days through the BA community and the object modeling group. So we're going to get familiarity with business process modeling notation and, and decision model notation so that you could review those process models, but if necessary, help specify them and if necessary, help use those to make sure we identify and create the appropriate acceptance tests. But as well as looking at some of that business process oriented test design, we're also, in, we're also helping the attendees to get a greater appreciation of non-functional testing and 
how that can also be incorporated within acceptance tests. So we're particularly looking at the, um, so the three core um, acceptance criteria that, that often business express. So usability and user experience, but also performance and security. So we're getting, we're gonna give um, the attendees a great ability to take those into account. And also um, we'll talk about collaborative approaches. So the aim here is that we're able to understand how to collaborate more effectively. So we'll talk about some of the, we're gonna be covering some of the, the, the approaches and mindsets that make a collaboration more, more, more effective. Um, and there is, going to be, there is going to be an overview of some of the key tools that we need to support with acceptance testing. So people coming out of the course are going to have a better insight in any kind of tool selection process uh, in respect of what we're going to be doing in acceptance testing. And that isn't particularly the test automation side. This is we're talking about the reporting and the, um, the organizational side of things, our test documentation and our coverage measurement. So those are some of the key things we're trying to cover in the course. Um, so to give you the, the detail of that, the course itself is it's a two day course uh, and we're covering the five key chapters in the syllabus. So we're looking at an introduction uh, and some of the key basic uh, principles around uh, the foundations of acceptance testing. Um, we're also looking at um, acceptance criteria, uh, acceptance testing and experience-based test practices. So just rather than me just reading the chapter headings off. So in the first part of the course, we're looking at the basic relationships between what the business analyst does uh, uh, and what the acceptance tester does. And we're giving you an overview of those key, the key stages in both the BA's process and the testing process and how they fit together. And we're giving an overview to the more agile oriented uh, ATDD, BDD approaches. And then we're going into some of the specifics. So looking at how we can both define and document acceptance criteria. And again, from traditional rule-based approaches through to scenario-based acceptance criteria. And then the converting of those acceptance criteria into acceptance tests, particularly the ATD, BDD type formats but also looking at some of the experience-based approaches we can use. Uh, a lot of this is going to be looking at uh, how we can organize exploratory testing. But to be able to create those tests, um, what we're also looking at is more, more about the, the BA input um, and the ways in which business processes can be modeled. Um, so an appreciation of the, the business process um, modeling notation and the, the decision modeling notations that are um, pretty much standardized now with the object model group. So we're talking through approaches for modeling business processes and then deriving the acceptance test to cover those models um, and how that modeling fits into um, acceptance testing. It, particularly here, we're looking at our coverage targets. Now, a lot of that's looking at the detail, but we're also opening up uh, and we're spending time on helping the attendees to understand the main non-functional characteristics, particularly here, usability and quality of use and user experience, but also how performance tests and performance acceptance criteria and security acceptance criteria and tests can be, um, can be derived and also need to be considered um, now, not all security tests, not all performance tests are going to be done in UAT, for example. Um, so inside the scope of this course, we're going to include aspects of uh, acceptance testing. So UAT, uh, also beta test, um, and we're not going to be looking in detail at things like operator acceptance testing. That's really more for the technical testing side of um, things. That's covered in other syllabi in, in ISTQB. The other important thing is about getting collaboration. Um, so in terms of collaborative acceptance testing, we're talking about the nature of collaboration and how uh, collaborative activities uh, and some of the key principles and um, practices that can help people to collaborate and work together. But also in this section, we're talking about how the, the tool 
tools can be used. Uh, so the kind of um, test management, defect management process that we need to have in place and the tools that can support those. So it's just very much about looking at all aspects of UAT. Um, and this is being an ISTQB course. It is building up, uh, it's building on the basics that have already been described in the, in the ISTQB certi um, certified tester uh, qualification course. So the, the exam, the, the exam that is um, run after the course has the same format as the, uh, so if any of you have done the ISTQB certified tester foundation exam, it's the same format. Now, I've had people who've come on the course who've come from a business, business analysis background, no formal testing, and they've, they've, they've had value out of the course uh, and found it useful. But if, it turns, if you're talking about translating this into a qualification, then it is important that I stress that this is part of the ISTQB scheme. This is on one of the specialist syllabi. So there is, an ex, there is a, 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 a formal requirement that for all the specialist syllabi, you've got to, before you can take this exam, you've got to hold the, uh, the certified test of qualification. Uh, the exam itself is the same format. So it's a multiple choice exam, uh, 60 minutes, 40 questions, each, one, each question worth one mark. And the pass mark in the exam is 65%. So you'd need to get 26 out of 40. Um, in the course, we're doing a mixture of uh, theory, quite a lot of practical exercises to make sure people do appreciate things like um, the acceptance test driven development style on the BDD style of test cases. So translating requirements into acceptance criteria, acceptance criteria into test cases, uh, interpreting uh, business processes uh, into business process models using um, business process model notation and decision model notation, but also the ability to be able to read and understand those models. Um, and that is also reflected in the practical tasks or the, uh, the, the K3 type questions in the exam. In the course we do, um, as well as practical exercises, we do set some exam-based um, preparation work as well. So people are getting both the, the handle on doing the tasks for business value, but also an appreciation of how that's going to be examined in the um, in the in the formal exam. Now, I did say this is a brief uh, overview of a of a two day course. So, just to summarise up, the the course itself is two days. It is a mixture of um, discussion and theory, but also practical exercises. Um, the learning objectives are aligned to those key. BA and test of business outcomes. And the overall aim of what we're trying to do here is facilitate more effective communication and collaboration between the two roles, particularly when for a lot of projects, testers sometimes are having to take on board a lot more of the BA role. Now, in terms of the content we are looking at, and um, we're gonna cover in both theory and practice, business process model notation, uh, decision model notation. So those of you who've done the foundation course may be familiar with decision, tables and uh, truth tables but business analysts write them out differently so it's going to give the appreciation of those uh, those forms of notation but also we're looking at acceptance test design for um, given when then gherkin type syntax behavior driven development format um, and we're also giving um, it's quite a bit of more detail about non-functional business requirements than was covered in things like the ISTQB general foundation course. And the exam itself, same format. So again, multiple choice, 60-minute, uh, one-hour exam, 40 questions, 65% pass rate, as is the same for all ISTQB qualifications. Now, just trying to get things in into a short... Um, into a short webinar. So I've tried to get it in within 20 minutes. So anybody got any questions? Over to you. Is the course available online? We we don't. If you if you mean as a remote learning, um, that's not the way we're delivering. We're delivering it as a virtual uh, course, 
Um, but that then is the intention is real time delivery. So people can attend uh, from any location, um, but we're presenting it online via Zoom um, in, as a real time course with exercises and feedback. The advantage of that being you are you're getting interaction with the trainer and a tutor, so you 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 can both get the information and get clarification about things. Now the exam, um, it, we, we, we organize that either as a, um, a virtual exam through um, remote proctoring, or we can provide um, Pearson View vouchers for people to take it at Pearson View centers. Um, this is pretty much what we've been doing over the last 18 months to two years as a result of lockdown. And it, no. um, evidence of previous ICB foundation is going to be required when you register for the exam. And that, that ISTQB will take off, will, will accept uh, both ISTQB. And if, if, if you're uh, as long as the truth is made, that they'll also accept things like the old BCS ISAB qualification. But you've got to have um, ISTQB foundation or equivalent qualification before you can take the exam. It's not, it's not necessary to actually to, to take the course. And I've had people who've taken the course with no intention of the qualification. They've still they've found value. Other people who've been uh, experienced testers, are, are, are some have taken the course and then decided to, do, um, to take the foundation exam and then take the, um, the, uh, the acceptance testing exam afterwards. Um, well, we we've, we fit this into a nine to five training format. So the way we deliver our courses is we run we run the course usually um, nine, finishing by five each day. But we put into that uh, usually a break every sixty to seventy minutes uh, with the with a forty five minute lunch break. We, the, the general understanding, we, we do explain where acceptance testing fits in general, but being um, this being supplementary to the ISTQB foundation, a lot of that is covered in the foundation course. And likewise, um, regression as, as a concept is, is something that we, we talk about, uh, but generally that's the, the, the expectation is that candidates uh, um, who are taking the exam already already know these things. I mean, in, in the respect of acceptance testing, you've got to bear in mind is if we are looking at a change related process, we will be using a lot of these tests as automated regression or manual regression tests. Does, does that answer your question? I mean, certainly we, we're talking about this uh, in the context of either a, a waterfall project or um, agile projects. So do, do non-testers need a basic understanding of what testing is before they take this course? Um, it's going to be an advantage, um, but so we, we would expect, or because we're talking about acceptance tests, we, I'd expect people to get an appreciation of acceptance tests or trying to verify acceptance criteria. Um, and beyond that, really, uh, we're not, would, would they, would they, I think they need a basic appreciation of testing. Um, does that make sense? I mean, the, the focus of this course is acceptance testing. For example, acceptance testing isn't looking at defect detection in quite the same way. Um, if you look at our website, then we've got, um, we're running the course usually, um, I think monthly, but if you look at, I, I don't know the exact detail, but if you look at our website, we've got a public schedule.
How new is the course? Um, well, the, the qualification and the course, I mean, we, we've been running this course, we started running this course uh, this year. This, this, so from our perspective, the reason we're referring to it is new. The qualification has been out. I think the, the actual qualification itself was, um, was published in 2019. Well, obviously, with lockdown, there's a lot of a lot of things that were were published out, published and launched, but doesn't necessarily mean courses were, have been uh, being rolled out at the same rate. From certainly from TSG's point of view, this is this is new to our portfolio. Well, we'll just, I mean, there's a few minutes left if anyone's got any other questions. Um, I think if, if, if you want to talk, you need to talk to our salespeople about discounts. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they've, they've organized anything for attending the webinar, but if you contact, if you contact um, the, uh, the salespeople, it's always worth, worth, worth asking, shall I say. Good, good ask, um, definitely. Well, I think we're it's 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 um, what twelve fifty seven. Well, well, thank thank. I really appreciate. It. Thanks for all of you attending. I hope you've you've got something useful. Um, so, I'd be nice to see you on the acceptance testing course. Um, if if you've got any questions, if you come back to us on the um, inquiries at TSG training or go to our website. Um, and we're always happy to. To hand, uh, I think that's going to be um, it's going to be promoted via the website. This we're doing a recording through through Zoom Cloud, so there'll be a link um, put on our website at some point. If in doubt, again, contact at inquiries. Is that okay? Okay, well, look, I'm I'm gonna say we're gonna we're, we're coming up to um, yeah twelve fifty eight now. So I'm gonna say thanks thanks everybody, thanks for attending. Let let's um, let's if you've got any follow up questions, let us know at at inquiries or go to the website. Thanks very much. Um, appreciate your time. I know it's like over lunch, and hope to talk to you on on something else or see you on a course in the future. Thanks everyone.